Profiting from property investing can be turned into a science if you know what data to use and how to use it. In this four part series, I'm going to walk you through a framework I've created with InvestorKit founder Arjun Paliwal that's never been shared publicly before. This framework is an integral part of how we helped our clients make over $350 million in equity. I'm Jung Ma, the lead research analyst at InvestorKit. We'll open up the four pillars of profit-driven data, what they are, why they're important, where to find the data, and how to interpret them. Plus a bonus at the end where I will bust in a data myth that could cost your portfolio growth. If you're serious about understanding the skills to profit from property investing, listen to this series all the way through. Let's get into it. So today we're looking at the first pillar, population and demographics. When we talk about population and demographics, the first things we'll be thinking of is population size, which is how many people are living in one area, and population growth perhaps, which is how many people are added to the population each year. That is a great start, but besides that, we can look at more things. One thing we can look at is the population change component. These components include natural increase, which is the difference in how many babies are born in this area and how many people have passed away. The second component is migration. On a national level, when we talk about migration, it is basically immigration, which is people moving from overseas, maybe from China, from India, from the UK, moving into Australia. But from, uh, for the local level, we will be looking at two things. One is internal migration and the other is again overseas migration. Internal migration is people from uh, other cities or other states moving into um, your city. One example, uh, what we see the most maybe now is people moving from Sydney to Melbourne or Brisbane. Overseas migration again is people moving from other countries into Australia. Sydney and Melbourne are the two biggest overseas migrant receivers in Australia at this moment. And another important thing we want to look at is uh, demographic characteristics. One example is the household size. I'll give you two examples. If we look at the Melbourne CBD, the average household size there is 1.7. That means that population there is dominated by uh, single or young couple households without kids. In the suburbs, you may find average household size of uh, three or f even four. That means in those areas, the population is dominated by family households. And that would uh, impact um, the local housing demand. So that is uh, what we are looking at when we examine the population and uh, demographics of a region. So basically population size, population growth, the component of uh, how the population is changing and uh, the demographic characteristics. Now let's move on to the whys. For the whys, we're looking at two things. One is why population growth components are important. And the other part is why demographic characteristics are important. So why population growth components are important on the one hand, if we understand where people are moving to, it'll be easier for us to tell where housing demand will be increasing or decreasing and uh, how much the housing demand will be changing. One example is um, regional Australia. The reason why we are confident in the regional housing market is that we see this constant internal migration trend from big cities into regional cities. It's true that in the regions, there, there is natural increase, but the influence of um, internal migration is much more important or much bigger on the housing demand change compared to the natural increases. Um, if we look at regional South Australia, you see that natural increase is actually negative last year. So their local housing demand is boosted by internal migration and some overseas migration. Another reason why population component is important is that we can more easily understand 
uh, how the housing demand will be changing when one component of the population changes or either influencers are changing during a certain period of time. One example can be natural increase. If more babies are born in this area this year, will that increase your housing demand? Probably no, because babies, when they're born, they won't leave the house, uh, they won't leave their family house and start their own household until they are adults. But on the other hand, if immigration policies change, will that affect our housing demand? I believe so. More of that influence will be on the rental market. One example is um, during COVID, at the beginning of the outbreak, Australia shut our international border and immediately we see a big drop in rental prices, especially in big cities like Sydney and Melbourne. However, that influence will be for a relatively shorter period because in the medium or in the long run, the market will adjust itself to make demand and supply balance again. So that is uh, how population components are important. Now let's look at demographic characteristics. So why demographic characteristics are important? On the macro level, it does help us understand better what's happening in the property market. We all know that Australia is going through this severe supply shortage. And why is that? One important reason is that the household size in Australia is actually declining. In the 1980s, Australia's average household size was close to 2.9 people per household. And now in 2023-2024, the average household size has dropped to under 2.5 people per household. And at the same time, our population increased by 70% over the 40 years or so. And combining these two factors, the number of households in Australia actually doubled in the 40 years. And at the same time, apparently, the number of housing supply is not doubled. So that is one important reason why we're facing this shortage in housing supply. And on a micro level, the demographic characteristics will help you understand what properties you'll be looking at if you're investing. For example, for a suburb with an average household size of 1.7, uh, basically under 2, you know that this this suburb or this area is dominated by singles or young couples without kids who don't really need big houses. So in these suburbs, you might be looking at smaller dwellings, uh, like one maximum three bedrooms instead of five, six bedroom uh, big houses, because that won't be the most sought after dwelling in this area. Um, on the country, if a suburb you're looking at has a um, average household size of uh, three or four, you might be looking at three-bedroom, four-bedroom, or even larger houses because uh, one- or two-bedroom dwellings can't be that popular for your potential tenant group. So now we have understand that population components are important to understand the changes in housing demand and demographic characteristics are important for us to understanding um, what's happening in the housing market and uh, uh, how we're going to choose the property type uh, we want to invest in. Now let's have a look at where we need to find the data. For population information, the best place we want to go is ABS. And uh, with ABS, we have uh, two platforms that um, we can look at. Um, first thing, if you want just quick stats or a quick snapshot of a uh, what's happening with the population in one area, what you can do is to search the census data. Um, I'll show you now. Basically, we want to search the census data, hit return, and you see the first result is the ABS one. Quickly click on the search census data and you'll be on this page. Cool. And uh, with this search uh, field, you can basically search any location you want um, from a national, for example, Australia, or uh, a state level, uh, or LGAs, or even postcodes. I'll try and search 
the Melbourne CBD postcode of 3000. And that is it. From here, what you can do is to click on the All Persons button. And this is the census uh, results of uh, the postcode of 3000. Oh, by the way, everything from ABS are totally free. So yeah, on this page, you see all, um, yeah, all the information for the postcode 3000 from population, um, which is uh, 43,000 or so. The average household size, 1.7, to household income, weekly rent, and more. And if you scroll down, you can see more information about their population from age groups to education level to cultural background and so on. And if you scroll down, you can see the dwelling structure and family structures in this area as well. How many households are couples with uh, children? How many households are couples without children? Or how many um, households are singles? Male, female, um, and then what's the typical dwelling type in this area as well. So yeah, full lot of uh, information on this census page. And if you want to compare it with um, the previous year's uh, census data, what you can use is this little uh, drop box here, a drop list here, and you see all the census data pages from 2001 to today. And now let me show you the other also very powerful platform, which is ABS Data Explorer. What we want to search is basically ABS Data Explorer. Click into it. The first one is it. And uh, from this page, we just click into Access Data Explorer. And now we're at the home page of the website. And this website has all information or da all data the ABS has to offer from economy, um, labor market, industries, people, health, environment, and so on. Now that we're talking about population, we'll just search population. And we go. And now it gives you all the data, sh data sheets or data sets ABS has about population, migration, and so on. We can see the historic um, population data. For example, the um, ERP from uh, 2017 to 2021. By the way, if you don't know what ERP is, it stands for Estimate Resident Population. It is an estimated um, population data from ABS updated once a year. It is more up to date than the census data. And uh, the ERP is uh, what investor kids usually use to, um, to estimate the population trend in each area. And besides the historic data, you can also see all these population projections. Um, the most latest, most recent one should be this 2022 to 2071. And if we click into each search result, you see this page. On the right hand side, you see all the search results, all the um, numbers or data you need. And on the left hand side, you can play with all the filters to get the best results you want. For example, we can filter by uh, time period. Um, for example, I want to check the ERP from 2017 to 2021. That is all the numbers uh, on a, let me check which level is it, is that by looking at the used filters, you know uh, what, what levels you're looking at. So now we're looking at the state and territory level um, annual ERP by components from 2017 to 2022. If you are uh, not satisfied with states, we can change it to, for example, statistical area level three, which is the usual SA3 investor kit likes to use. So now we've got the uh, ERP by components by SA3 from 2017 to 2021. And if you're happy with this searching result, simply go to the download button and download it either as CSV or as Excel sheet. So now we have understood 
why they're important and where to find the population data, which is from ABS, two platforms. One is the census data pages and the other is the almighty ABS data explorer. Now let me give you an example to show you how population growth and migration growth would affect the housing market. And this example would be on Hobart. From 2014 to 2017, Hobart's internal migration skyrocketed. And uh, a few years later, uh, from 2015, 16 or so, the overseas migration also started increasing really robustly. And as a result of these two factors, Hobart started this really strong population growth over six years, averaging 2.7% annual population growth. That is a really high annual growth rate. And following this consecutive strong population growth, Hobart's property market started a six-year-long really strong growth. From 2017 on, the annual house price growth in Hobart was always above 7%. And during COVID, it was even above 20%. And after all these years of robust growth, Hobart became the best performer across all capital cities in terms of uh, house value growth. And uh, now in 2024, even after one year and a half's decline and stagnancy, Hobart's last 10-year average house price growth is still the highest among all capital cities. Isn't that impressive? So now um, we have uh, looked at Hobart's experience to better understand the impact of uh, population growth and migration growth on household um, on the housing market um, it's time I believe for our myth busting and one common myth that investors usually uh, believe in is that size matters in terms of population um, yeah many investors believe in Sydney's housing price growth or house value growth because uh, Sydney has the biggest population size across Australia. Many investors believe in Sydney's housing market because Sydney is the largest city in Australia. With such a large population, what could go wrong with the housing market, right? But in fact, population isn't everything. I'll give you an example. Albury is a small city on the border of uh, New South Wales and Victoria. And the population size there is only 69,000. Compared to Sydney's 5.5 million population, it is nothing. However, over the past 10 years, house price there grew by 112%. Do you know how much Sydney has grown? It is 106%. It is even lower than Aubrey's growth. So you see, population isn't everything. Housing demand and supply really is the dominant factors for housing growth. Now to summarize, we started with what? When we talk about population, we talk about, we look at population size, population growth, population change components, which include natural increase, internal migration, overseas migration, and then demographic characteristics. Because they, uh, one, they tell us what's happening, why things are happening in the housing market. And uh, they also help us choose what properties we need when investing. And then we moved on to where to find the data. Just remember, ABS is all free. And uh, you can go to ABS census data pages or the ABS data explorer pages to find whatever population related data you need. And then I gave you an, um, uh, an example on Hobart, to help you understand why population growth and migration growth is important for housing demand and housing price changes. And um, then in the end, I busted a myth about population size matters because um, in the end, population size isn't everything. What you should look at is all the influencers, especially the demand and supply in the housing market at a certain time. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. In the next episode, we're going to talk about construction activities. If you're listening to us on iTunes or Spotify, 
don't forget to follow. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.